The second line in this file is about our REST API authorization control, which represents all you have been putting in place for controlling the user rights when they try to access a given REST API resource. What is very important to know is that in Monita API we have also a second API which is called the HTTP API, which is mainly useful for testing purposes, but you can strongly suggest to either deactivate when you go in production or to try to protect with a basic authentication strategy that you might put in place in your architecture. So if you want to disable your HTTP API, we have to go and edit your web.xml file under the web app folder in your Tomcat. So if we open it, we can see that in this file we have defined all the servlets and all the things that we can expose to the external world. So if we look for HTTP API, we can certainly see a servlet, so the HTTP API servlet that we need to comment as well as its sublet mapping. So it's enough to comment those two parts and store and save the, the web.xml. And once you restart your web application, the HTTP API will be disabled. Let's now go back to your security configuration file and let's focus on this second line. As I said before, this is about our REST API authorization control. What is important to understand is that REST API user rights are by default strictly related to the profile mapping. For example, if a resource is only accessible from an administrator, a simple user will not be able to access this resource. So we say that by default user rights are isolated by profile. This is what we call static check and you can find much more information in the official documentation, as I show you here. Here it is the web page, the documentation where you can find, you see static authorization checking and it will explain you how does it work and why it's so strictly related to the user profiles. But since this static check is activated by default, we will not go in much in details during this presentation. What we are going to see is what we call dynamic checks. This is for isolating users inside the same profile by applying some business rules. For example, by default, two simple users can see each other BPM information, like for example, the list of tasks that have to be executed. But if we activate the dynamic checks, those users can see BPM information only if they are involved in the process and in the BPM tasks. We didn't want to activate those BPM rules by default because we think that it's uh, a customer choice to define their own business rules at the scope of their control. So now we are going to see how we can activate those dynamic checks. Again, in the folder where you installed your Bonita BPM, at the tenant level, we have a dynamic permission check file. If we edit this file, we can see that there are uh, many lines which are related to the different business rules. Let's try to understand the first line. Here is written that if I activate this dynamic check simply by uncommenting this line, I will override the static check on the BPM case resource. In this case, if I activate this missile rule, I will say that the currently logged user will be able to access the BPM case resource using the method get only if it's part of the administrator profile or if it satisfies this check, the case permission rule check. In a moment, I will show you what is this case permission rule and where we can find its content. But now, just let's say that you can activate this rule by simply saving this file and restarting your web server. You could do even more by uncommenting all the lines, all the rules that we can see here for having the full security. So if you want to be secure 100% without even thinking about business points and business 
aspects just uncomment all those rules and you'll be fine it might now be interesting to see where we can find and change and analyze those rules well still in your bonita bpm folder we need to go now uh, from the client side to the server side in your bonita home so if we go under the engine server and uh, in the work folder for your current tenant we see that we can find a security script folder here you can see all those groovy scripts and each groovy script is associated to a business rule so the one we were saying before it was the case permission rule so here we can find case permission rule dot groovy so we can open it and let's have a look let's have a look to its content I will not go much in details but just to see a quick example we see that is this method which is, is allowed which will mainly be the method that we have to override in each permission rule and if we see our get method which is the one that we are considering in this example um, just let's focus on these three lines three four lines we see that um, we we are going to calculate this is involved variable seeing if the current user id is really involved in this process instance id or if it is the manager or one of the users involved in the process instance if it is the case this check will return true otherwise we go through other kind of test and at the end we're going to have a boolean result true or false you have the authorization to get in or not so this is all about and you can customize those files or add your own files as you want if you wish to add your own groovy script remember to override the is allowed method and you just need to add your file in this folder regarding the dynamic permission check dot properties remember to rename this class if you need it